Hello, Chief Haddad. My name is David Wood. You might remember me as the Christian whose constitutional rights were repeatedly violated at the Dearborn Arab Festival. Wait, I'm not being specific enough, am I? Dozens of Christians had their rights violated at the Arab Festival. All right, I'm the Christian who was arrested while standing on a public street recording a peaceful dialogue. I'm sorry, that's not clear enough either, is it? There were three Christians arrested while standing on a public street recording a peaceful dialogue. This was in addition to our friend Nabil, who was arrested while proclaiming his love for a group of Muslims who were insulting and threatening him. All right, I'm the six foot three white guy who was, arre who was arrested, whose camera and equipment were illegally seized, and who was thrown in jail on a false charge as punishment and retribution for resisting your attempts to establish Sharia law in Dearborn. Oh, that's clear enough. Normally, I'd rather talk to someone face to face. The problem in this case is that I don't trust you at all. People in your department, including you, have lied to us, and you have no respect for the civil rights of non Muslims. This makes it a bit difficult to sit down with you. For all I know, you won't like something I say, and then you'll use your position as chief of police to have me tossed in yet another jail cell on yet another false charge. And since I know that if I were to bring a camera along, you'd just have your Sharia task force illegally strong-arm it from me again, I figured it would be best if I say what I need to say in a video, far, far away from the long arm of the STF. Chief Haddad, you have our three video cameras, as well as several of our microphones, camera bags, cables, adapters, etc. Not to mention my pocket New Testament, assuming you haven't ripped it to shreds, as you've already done with the Bill of Rights. By now, you know what's on those cameras. You know that Nabil, in the midst of sharing his faith, was walking around with a wireless handheld microphone interviewing people who came up to him. What's that called? That's called journalism. Good. We were going to use that footage for YouTube, for our blog, and for a TV show that I do on ABN. Now, I might be inclined to give you the benefit of the doubt and say, well, maybe Chief Haddad isn't aware of the fact that it's illegal for him to seize the cameras of journalists. But I can't say that about you because two weeks ago, the Thomas More Law Center faxed you a letter informing you that it was illegal for you to seize our cameras. And yet you haven't responded, nor have you returned our cameras. The question is why? Why would you trample on the U.S. Constitution by refusing to give back our property? This may seem like an odd question after you unlawfully arrested us, took away our freedom of speech, illegally confiscated our property, violated our right to freedom of the press, and obliterated the free expression of our religion. In other words, since you've already violated our rights in almost every way imaginable, why would it be surprising that you're violating them further by not returning our cameras? Well, I think your refusal to respect our right to our own video footage says a lot about your motives. I'm sure you've been following the news stories about the violation of our rights. Some people are saying that we were harassing Muslims, that we were tormenting children, that we were preaching fire and brimstone, that we were trying to cause a scene, that police officers ordered us to leave, and that in a stubborn act of defiance, we refused. Now, since you've seen the footage, you know that all of this is sheer deception. I'll focus on these distortions and outright lies in a separate video, but what I'd like to ask you, Chief Haddad, is this. Why is it that people are able to continue circulating lies about our ministry when there's video footage proving that these men are lying? They're able to spread deception about us. They're able to drag our reputations through the mud because you took away our constitutionally protected video footage that we would have used to show people what really happened at the festival. So you haven't just violated our constitutional rights in half a, do half a dozen or so ways, you've also actively enabled those who hate and despise us to spread lies about us. And there's nothing we can do about these lies because you've got the truth locked up inside that impenetrable fortress of oppression and intolerance known as the Dearborn Police Department. The truth would have been circulating on news programs and YouTube videos long ago if only you hadn't decided to declare war on both Christianity and America itself. You know what's on those cameras, Chief Haddad. And you know that practically everything our critics are saying about us is patent nonsense. And so it seems that the reason you're refusing to return our cameras is that you want people to lie about us. In which case, your hatred of Christians, your contempt for our, right, our rights, and your corruption are all the more evident. 
Chief Adad, I know that the footage on those cameras is going to embarrass your department when people see what really happened at our arrest. Many people are going to be exposed as liars when the world sees Nabil Qureshi peacefully sharing his beliefs with Muslims who approached him, and the rest of us calmly recording the exchange. That's not the version of events you want circulating, but that's what actually happened. You know it, and I know it. But I want America to know it. Everyone's telling me, of course, that you're not going to allow it, that you're going to erase the footage, or that the cameras are going to mysteriously disappear, just as the civil rights of Christians mysteriously disappeared the moment you became chief of police. That certainly wouldn't surprise me, given what I've seen from your department, so I don't know what to expect, but I can say that it's not going to look good, and no one's going to be fooled if you erase our footage. So if it's not too much trouble, we'd like a property back. Property which, let's face it, you stolen from us. If possible, I'd also like the footage from the security cameras in the police department when you were booking us. I think the footage will help us expose the bias of the Dearborn PD. For instance, I've heard that when your officers forced Nagin to take off her long sleeve shirt and strip down to her tank top in front of the male police officers who were present, one of them said, let's get this beautiful girl into a nice cell. Then he said, step over here so we can get a look at you. Now, I'm willing to interpret this for the moment in the most innocent manner imaginable. But I'd like to ask you this. Would your officers have treated an 18-year-old Muslim girl like that? Would they have forced her to strip down to a tank top in front of male officers? And would they have made comments about her beauty and about getting a better look at her? Of course not. They wouldn't dare. Why? because this is Dearborn and there are two sets of rules, one for Muslims and one for everyone else. What I'd like to see from the Dearborn Police Department is equal treatment under the law. At last year's Arab festival, Muslim security guards physically assaulted us. They even physically assaulted our friend Mary Jo, while one of them confidently declared that, like you, he doesn't care what our rights as American citizens are. Remind me, how many of those security guards were hauled off in handcuffs? None! Right! despite the fact that we had the attacks on camera. And yet I was arrested this year, apparently as revenge, for publicizing the attacks last year. I didn't assault anyone. I didn't insult anyone. I didn't do anything wrong. Neither did Nabil or Paul or Nagin. Why the double standards, Chief? How come a Muslim won't get arrested for physically assaulting a Christian woman, but a Christian woman will go to jail for holding a camera on a public street? The reason, Chief Haddad, is you. As far as I'm concerned, if you're going to use your position and authority to persecute, oppress, and subjugate members of any religion, you don't qualify for mall security, let alone chief of police. And so I hope that for once you'll do the right thing. I invite you to return the cameras that you illegally seized. I also invite you to take full responsibility for your department's oppression of Christians and to resign from your position as chief of police, not only because of your complete disregard for the constitutional rights of non-Muslims, but also because you have no concern for the reputations of the officers under you. You send them out to persecute Christians, and some of them don't want to persecute Christians. How do I know? Some of them told us. And yet they have to follow your orders. But when I put up a video showing them harassing Christians for handing out Bibles or arresting people for having a peaceful discussion, they're the ones who look bad, all because they're taking orders from you. So you're throwing your fellow officers under the bus and you don't seem to care as long as you get to continue your campaign of reducing Christians to dimmy status. Your officers also know that you refuse to give back our stolen property because you're trying to avoid the consequences of your illegal activities. They know you're corrupt. And I have no clue how you can hold your head high among them. You have no business being a role model for other police officers, Chief. Well, not in America. I think you'd fit right in at a police station in, say, Iran, which seems to be the template for your work in Dearborn. Finally, based on your irrational hatred of Christians, a hatred which causes you to lose all concept of right and wrong whenever someone so much as thinks of handing out a gospel tract, I'd recommend some professional help or, at the very least, some anger management classes. Better yet, 
You might want to read one of the copies of the Gospel of John my friends tried to distribute outside the festival before being surrounded by eight members of your Sharia task force. We have plenty of copies left over since you took away our constitutional right to hand them out. I'd be happy to give one to you and to everyone in your department. I think you'll find that the Gospel isn't nearly as frightening as you're making it out to be. It certainly isn't something that should be censored by the government on a public street in the United States of America. See you in court, Chief.